10 years is such a long time. A lot of things have changed. I miss seeing my friends a lot. Everything happens for a reason. We've proved the naysayers wrong. <laughs> so there's nothing I would change. This is my 11th year. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I thought I would do this video because I turned 30. Actually, it was last October, but I have been putting this video on hold for a while because I just, I guess I didn't feel the courage to do it. But today we shall be answering some burning questions and also to do a bit of reflection because I guess turning 30 is a very big milestone. When I was in my teenage years, I looked at someone who was 30 and I thought, wow, she is old. <laughs> and when I was in my early 20s, I'm like, wow, 30 is 10 years away. 10 years is such a long time. And now that I'm here, it's crazy because I put 30 out to be way older in my own head than I actually am. A lot of things have changed, but it's all for the better. So I am, I guess, embracing life in my 30s. And yeah, let's ask away. Okay, so what's the first question? How do I feel about turning 30? In fact, happier than I thought I would be. It was always very daunting to me, but I feel good. I would say 30 is still very young in hindsight because, you know, life is like 80, 90 years. So I've got hopefully another 50 plus more years to go. So I'm not even halfway there. Turning 30 has made me realize the important things in life. When I was in my early teenage years, I was chasing things like grades, getting into school. So I was always chasing for all these things that at 30, doesn't really matter. I feel like I've matured and I've gotten wiser, hopefully, and I realized how important perception is and how important being able to control your mind is. Mm, hardest part, I think it's the physical aspect of things. Obviously, I start to see a lot of volume loss <laughs> in my face. I am putting on weight a lot quicker than I used to. I could eat anything and I wouldn't put on anything. <laughs> so the physical changes is very, very real. The metabolism, the slowdown. But other than that, I feel like everything is for the better. Actually, it's quite similar. There are many things that I miss about the studying phase of my life. I miss that controlled environment where things were very predictable. Like I knew this is what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be taking my exams on this date, my finals then, and then I will get my results here and then I'll choose this or I'll choose that. You know, so everything is very controlled. Whereas adulting, it's an open-ended question every single day. And especially, you know, working for yourself, a day can look very different to versus like next month you might be out of a job you might not have food on the table you might not be able to pay your workers things like that so these are the main uncertainties and the things that are very different I really miss studying though I miss seeing my friends a lot like seeing my friends every single day that's something you don't do anymore like on good months you see them once a month that is reality <laughs> Oh, education. Okay, I think education is very important. Very, very important. Especially in Singapore's context. Unfortunately, we are a very meritocratic but yet grades-focused society. If you do well in your grades, you have a high GPA. Chances are you can get jobs easier than others, especially jobs that are more skilled in bigger corporations. But at 30, I want to say that my mindset and my perception has definitely changed because that was what everyone was telling me in my early 20s when I was in college and uni, right? But now that I'm 30 and I see so many people in my field or in many, many different fields who have succeeded despite not going to the most prestigious schools or completing their studies. <laughs> And they actually succeed. So actually in hindsight, I think it is important, but it's not everything. So for those of you who are studying right now, I would say don't be too hard on yourself. But of course, give your best shot. Don't drop out of school just because you are trying to aspire to be the next Steve Jobs. If I put myself in the shoes of Steve Jobs' mom, for example, if Micah actually displays like these kind of traits right from a very young age, then I would definitely want to support him to pursue whatever he is good at but provided he knows exactly what he wants to do and he gives me like a plan to tell me how he wants to achieve it and I think it has to be a very realistic one. The short answer is education is extremely important but there are exceptions. It's not everything. Something you regret not doing in your 30s. Hmm. I don't 
regret anything. I truly believe that everything happens for a reason and I don't want to change anything about my life today. And I feel that if I had done anything differently when I was younger, things would have been different today. So I'm very happy and very contented with what I have today. In a way, I would say I'm quite proud to be here. We have been through so many ups and downs, you know, mentally, work-wise, uncertainties, but we've proved the naysayers wrong. <laughs> so there's nothing I would change. How many years have I been on the internet? Uh, I started in 19, so 11 years. This is my 11th year. <gasps> Mmm, very good question. I think I make a very conscious effort to keep my passion alive. So, it's not dead, but definitely ever since I made this a full-time job, ever since I started growing my own team, it has gotten a lot less passion and more work because that's reality. And I don't think anyone can stay passionate about something, like equally as passionate about something consistently throughout like a decade or more. But it's not a bad thing. I feel like I am learning a lot and that is the most important thing for me in life is to constantly feel like I am growing as a person. And despite doing this for 11 years, I feel like I'm still learning so much. Yeah, so now I'm learning to be a better business owner, a better boss, you know, rather than just how to be good at makeup, how to dress nicely. It's just more than that. Passion can only get you this far, but you have to balance with other things. What's your favorite YouTube video that you've done so far? Oh, oh my god. I can't really remember all the videos that I've done so far. Hmm, let me think. Okay, I have here. How do I scroll, man? There's so many. There's so many. How many of you guys have been watching me from years ago? Let me know which is the video that you kind of discovered the channel. Engagement, right? I also think so. Mmm, really? I love the big milestone ones. So, the proposal, the home tour, the birth vlog, finding out we are pregnant, and my travel. I miss those days as well. Oh, oh my god, I miss like vlogmas actually. <laughs> when we went to learn K-pop dance, it was really fun too. Okay, but if I really have to choose, I would say it would be the proposal video because that was a, for the first time not something that I directed. <laughs> it's something that I will keep watching forever. I think like a lot of people are quite fixated on like feeling like that Eureka moment like oh I met the one. I hate to break it to you but <laughs> there's no such moment. For me like at least because we were together for so long. We have been together for 12 years. So he proposed to me when we were together for like our fifth year and then got married on our seventh year. I guess with time you just know that there's no one else I'd rather be with or spend the rest of my life with because this person is able to I guess make me a better person, that's one. I also feel like we are both growing together and with every milestone, we always see each other as part of it. Like there's never one time that we would plan our future or think about our future without each other in it. It's very nice having a companion that you can trust wholeheartedly with your passwords, with your bank account, with your money. I mean, granted you might meet scammers, but I feel like he's not a scammer lah, right? So if I can trust someone like that so wholeheartedly, then yeah, I think that means he's the one for me. So there was a Eureka moment, but it just happened very gradually that I can't envision a life without him inside. <laughs> Oh, with my life with Matt. So I guess parenthood. How has life changed ever since parenthood? For the better, of course. But of course, there are many, many ups and downs. Obviously, this is a brand new thing. It's nothing that we have been able to experience and roughen out throughout our 12 years together. But we always remind ourselves that we are a team. We're not against each other because we have a common goal. We want to bring Michael up well. We want him to be safe and healthy. So whenever we have disagreements on how to bring up Micah, we would always just 
talk it out and like I guess for me I put in a lot more effort and more work into doing the research and I spend a lot more time with Michael so Matt respects that and he pretty much gives me the free reign to do what I want with Michael because he trusts that I have his best interest at heart and whatever I would do with him or introduce to him I've done a lot of research I would say not really having Michael that gave us the disagreements but rather there were many many times I guess it's the hormones postpartum or like during the entire pregnancy where I felt like he is not able to fully understand what I'm going through so that's when I felt quite lonely but sometimes it's just our mind and our hormones speaking before I react or before I kind of form a conclusion in my head that he is the most horrible husband on earth right I will always like take a step and be like is it the hormones can I give myself just one more week can I talk to Matt about it can I tell him what I'm feeling and see if he's gonna do anything about it or reassure me in his own ways and so far even though the journey was quite a lonely one I realized that it's also not fair to put him through and expect him to be able to understand fully what I'm feeling at that point in time especially if he's not the one growing the baby he doesn't know how it feels <laughs> so yeah I try to understand that way but of course, Matt and I did a Q&A uh, about parenthood, I think in the earlier video. So if you would like to watch that, you can go and watch that for a more in-depth answer. I definitely want one if I can, God willing. I was most afraid of the entire pregnancy, you know. I feel like having a baby is really a miracle. To begin with, it's so hard for us to even get pregnant. We tried for one year going to fertility specialists. I was on some supplements and everything. And obviously, to survive the pregnancy and have the baby develop properly and well throughout 10 months, anything can go wrong, you know. It truly is a miracle. Yeah, right up to the birth and then the whole birth and then the confinement and then the newborn stage and everything. So I was most afraid that he would be not healthy. I think that's every parent's like biggest concern. Yeah. I get this question a lot, like when do you know you're ready to be a mom? The answer is, even if you are prepared your whole life for it, you will never be ready because you really don't know what you don't know. Whatever I've read about motherhood is all through the internet, through friends who are moms, but I will never be fully convinced until I go through it myself. So I would say don't let that stop you, but of course, the practical things you have to be ready for, you need to make sure you set aside enough money for it. You need to set aside enough space at home, enough people to help you because it truly takes a village to raise a kid. You need to set aside the time as well. Are you at the right time where you are able to at least take the first three months of your baby's life off and the subsequent year at least to be around for your baby? Yeah, I think those are the more practical questions to ask. Mom guilt is, I think, the biggest struggle right now. And what I hear is that you can never run away from it. Even until your kid is like 20 years old, you will always have this mom guilt. And the guilt comes from not being able to be there for your kid 24-7 because your kid needs you all the time. And you are put in situations that keeps testing you. Realistically, you are never going to be 100% there for your kid all the time and you need to rest and you put yourself first and everything and sometimes the kid just calls you mommy mommy like can you do this with me mommy mommy where do you go oh i have to work so you're constantly like challenged you know in that way and you constantly be reminded of that guilt but how i deal with it is i try to kind of schedule my time if i have a very very packed work week i try to spend a bit more time the next week with him and I plan more meaningful activities. You know, I bring him to the zoo, I bring him to the park, I bring him to the beach where we can do new things together. Yeah, so that's how I deal with it. But I don't think I'm doing a great job. So, yeah. A plastic bag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. I said, do you ever feel like a plastic bag? <laughs> Because I'm only human, ma. Like I said, you know, it's a lot of like convincing in my head. I tell myself that I'm very blessed 
to have a helper that loves Micah like her own. And that is something that I really wouldn't trade for anything in the world because I don't want to constantly feel like someone is going to harm him. That's a very scary thought. So I'm just super thankful that that is out of the way. But obviously, you know, in fact, increasingly more so, he calls for her a lot more than he calls for me. And whenever I carry him and put him to sleep on a rare occasion that I take time out of my work to try to put him to sleep, he will be like, no, I don't want mama. I want Titi, you know, and that really kills me inside a little bit. But I know it's normal and I tell myself that it's better that he has two moms to take care of him rather than one. So, yeah. Oh, that life is a lot shorter than you think. When I was in my 20s, I always felt like, oh my god, I need more time, I need more time because I just have so many things I want to do. I want to hang out with this friend, I want to eat this thing, I want to go this place, I want to travel here and there. And I always kind of like, oh, it's okay, I'll do it next week. Okay, I'll do it next month, you know? But I realised that a lot of things I take for granted, like health, Every time I want to eat something when I was younger, I'm like, ah, I can wait for the next occasion to eat it or whatever. But I don't realize that I'm taking my health for granted because now with, you know, not so good health, I have to watch a lot of the things that I eat. And I just wish I came in and I went to eat whatever I wanted to eat when I was younger. I guess it's something I want to keep doing for the rest of my life, which is to learn new skills and constantly be growing. When I was in my 20s, I made it a point to make it like my New Year's resolution to like pick up a new skill every year or like improve myself in a certain way. I picked up Korean, you know, I started expanding my team. I tried to learn golf. Basically, just constantly improve myself because I don't really want to stay in one place and be so comfortable and contented. Or like even try to build like my TikTok, try to go back to YouTube, things like that. Even small changes like that is personal growth to me. So that's something I wish I can continue forever. Wow. I am proud of myself for saving a lot in my 20s. I worked really, really hard. I made money, but like it was very hard to not give in to instant gratification when everyone around me was buying new bags every week, traveling all the time, renovating their studio or like owning like a big ass office space, buying the best equipment, stuff like that. Because all these things, yes, I can afford it at that time, but like I helped onto it and I kept thinking of ways I could save money. Saving money and investing is something that Matt and I have always agreed on but during the journey of getting there, it was very, very tough. And now that I'm in my 30s, even though I've still got a long, long, long way to go before I hit my goal, I would say I'm starting to see the results of saving when I was younger and now I'm able to also realise that instant gratification is super real and we really shouldn't be giving in to it. Therefore, whenever I think of buying something, especially if it's a big ticket item, I always think about how much Happiness, is it going to bring me? Is it worth it? Do I actually even have space at home? Do I truly need it? I'll sit on it for about a week. And if I still feel the same or if I feel even more about something, then I'm just going to do it. Any plans to expand another end aside from property? Oh, of course. <laughs> Of course, we definitely have some ideas in the pipeline and some new products coming up, so stay tuned! Alright, thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I mean, there are a lot of good questions and I think this video is going to be super long, but if you stay to the end, thank you so much for following me on this super long journey. It's been more than a decade. So if you're still here and if you were here from the very start, let me know in the comments box down below. And I just wanted to say a big thank you and I love you guys. You guys are truly my rock, you know, like for being there for me. Y'all don't know how much your comments, your DMs really, really help to get me through some of the toughest months and days in life. So thank you and I'll see you guys soon. Bye!